morning, church family. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. We're this so glad that you're here. Yeah, this is the day, Pastor. The Lord has made. We will rejoice. I, I just want to make a special welcome for the Daniel Palaganas and the Matner tandem today. This is brand new. So I, I'm, and, and Kyle made mention about generational worship. And you know what? We want to engage that word this morning that today there are generations of people that are really following Jesus. I, we've got some good news here, so stay, you know, and be able to hear the word because we're not going to let you go without something that you can hang on to this tough times and different situation you are in. But first, we want to rejoice and bless the name of the Lord. So, God, thank you for where two or three are gathered in your name. Hallelujah. You are there in the living room. You are there in the bedroom, in the car, in our workplaces, wherever we are, you are there, Lord. So, God, thank you for assuring us of your presence today as we worship you, as we seek you first. Put you first, Lord God, and even hearing your word and the rest of the day and the days to come, Lord God, is secured in your hand. We bless everyone who has prayer needs and prayer requests. Thank you that you have appropriated a promise and assurance for them. And we will agree with them in prayer as well. And today, Lord, we just want to honor you, give you back all the praise, the glory for this. We pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen and amen, everybody. Amen. amen. So, church, thank you so much for joining us. Start your Facebook watch parties. Get your friends. Let them know that we're here. We're worshiping together. And as always, we invite you. Any prayer requests, praise reports, stick them in the comments section so that amen. we can rejoice with you in what God is doing and we could stand with you in prayer as we enter into worship. We'll send it over to you guys. Woohoo! Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, just wanted to say hello wherever you may be and that... Uh, you know, as we worship together, even though we're apart, uh, it's a wonderful thing that we can can be together like this. And uh, I just had a feeling this last week when deciding or figuring out what the Lord wanted us to sing that we really need to, with everything going on in the world, uh, dig in and just realize that we need Him now more than ever, it seems like, with everything going on. So let's just uh, rejoice and tell Him how much we need Him this morning. Amen. On this thirsty desert ground In a dry and barren land I bow down I need you now I will run to your river. I bow down. I need you now. I need you now. Oh, living water. Oh, God, my Savior. If I am To your river, 
you're good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love, the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleasing, that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Wow. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us be your children. Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us know, God, that you are there watching us in every circumstance and situation and that we don't hesitate to come before your presence. You told us to come boldly, have courage, no fear at all in coming before your holy presence. And that assuring love today we heard Give us the boldness and the faith to depend upon you, mm. to trust you. Yes, that today I'm joining with my brothers and sisters that are viewing this whole streaming program because they agree with your word. They allow faith to rise from yes. their heart right now. Yes. We release in the name of Jesus, the working of the Holy Spirit mm. that would bring comfort and strengthening the working of the Holy Spirit, that by the blood of Jesus Christ, all the things and the sins of the past will be forgiven, that by the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross right now, all sicknesses are being healed in Jesus' name. Yes, because you're the good Father. Thank you that even before we express with our mouth to ask you, you already knew from your heart. And so that gives us the assurance that this morning, whatever we ask you, whatever we petition you, whatever we request you, it's not unknown to you. It's not strange to you. In fact, Lord, you are expecting us to come before you with all of these needs. And so right now, throughout this whole presentation today, in the next few minutes that we're going to spend together in power of agreement in your name. We will see miracles. We will see signs and wonders. We will see unusual ministry of the Holy Spirit to the hearts and lives of people in the living room, in the hospital, wherever everyone right now is watching, even as you send your own prayers in distance to many other of your relatives and friends and family. So today we just give you back all the praise, the glory, the honor and the thanksgiving for the assurance that we have because you are a good, good father. For this we ask and pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We give praise to the Lord today. Hallelujah. Come on, people. Just give thanks to him. He is worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all thanksgiving. Yes, Lord, you deserve it. And we bless you. Amen and amen. Amen. And in your circle right now, wherever you're watching, in your living room at home, just begin to thank God. You know, release seasons of worship and praise before God. Because, hey, He delights. He dwells in the praises of His people. Mm -hmm. Today, we want to be able to give you an opportunity to join us, not only by listening, but to join us in being able to give. I know the generosity that is being challenged nowadays. And because of this, we are here constantly bringing the word to you on this mode because there are special people that are supporting us, that are blessing us, that are partnering with us and standing alongside of us to continue on the ministry. We don't mention names, but hey, the Lord bless you. Because he understands that all of this is made possible by those generous hands and hearts that had stood with us for all of these months of this pandemic. 
and to get the Ministry of Heights Worship Center continually reaching you today. So you can give in person by being able to mail in your check, or you can talk to your bank online for automatic deduction or giving, or at the same time using Zelle with phone number 626-893-9963. There you go. Okay, with all of this opportunity to give, we want to let you know that the, the increase of ministry is just uh, surprising. The things we haven't done in the past, you know, and meeting people in different groups throughout the week is just awesome. And getting word out there. And many of you that are watching are part of our new family now at Heights Worship Center. We haven't really seen you face to face, but because you are watching, you know, and uh, from even different countries and different states here in America, we the Lord has enlarged our family. So we want to pray right now with our giving statement. We're going to declare this, hallelujah, because we are in faith, in agreement that God allows us to be able to invest and give because of his great love to us. Channels of blessing continually, okay? Let's go. Here we go. All together, we declare, I give because I love. I love, so I give. I love my church, therefore I give to my church. I give because I am thankful. I give because he is worthy. I give because I trust. I give because I can never outgive him. Father, help me to live, to give, and give to live. You gave all. Help me to give all. Jesus, bless everyone that extends their gift in prayer, in finance, in cooperation, and just being there, Lord, bringing the gospel together with us, inviting friends to watch this gathering today. Let your blessing rest upon all of us today. For this we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. Amen. Thanks, Pastor, so much. So, church, a couple of announcements for our kids. As you know, we love our kids. We continue to invest in our kids. There is no Zoom Kids Church today, but starting next week, we're going to launch a new series. It will have a special Kids Church Zoom following Sunday morning service, and we're going to talk about putting on the armor of God. So again, parents, kids, I want to make sure that you understand not today, but we want to get you ready for next week. But we do have some exciting things that are happening that your kids can get involved in, even though the pandemic continues and we are making changes. We have five day clubs with the Good News Club and uh, it's happening all week long. You can get your kid involved ages five to 12. It's like Vacation Bible School online. And so I want to ask Daniel if he'll come back in because Daniel is one of our many church people who have been doing the five day clubs and he's going to update us on what is happening with Good News Club and some of the exciting reports that's happening with kids from all over. So, hey, Daniel. Hi, church family. So I've been helping out for these um, five day clubs for probably about like the past month now. And that's how long these five day clubs have been going on this summer. And it's been an amazing time. There's so many Bible stories, so many songs, so many games that we've been playing. And even though it's on Zoom, God is using Zoom in a very, very amazing way. And so many kids are being saved and kids are generously giving towards our missionaries. And actually I want to um, share this in our previous afternoon club, uh, the entire club raised almost $400 for, wow. for missionaries, which is amazing. And actually, I want to give a shout out to the Lostras, Hennessy, uh, Jaslyn, Janae, and Mila. They were actually in our five-day club last week. So kids, if you really want, if you want something to do over the break, learn more about God, I really encourage you guys to sign up for these five-day clubs so that one, you can learn more about Jesus, but not only that, you can have fun learning about learning more about Jesus. So, so yeah. what times are available, Daniel, for the five-day clubs? So I'm not sure about the upcoming weeks, but I know this week there is a 10 a.m. club. 
Okay. And usually there's one in the morning or one in the afternoon. So whatever you guys prefer, you guys can sign up for whatever time you want. And you were telling us that you've got students from other countries, other states. Okay. Yeah, so actually we've had kids uh, join our clubs from Africa, from China, and all around the U.S., like the East Coast, Texas, everywhere. So you're not going to be seeing people that you know. You're going to be interacting with kids from not only from America, but all over the world. That's so cool. So families, kids, if you want to sign up, we made it easy. Just go to our website, hwcim.org slash five day club. And we've got it there where you can register, see when the clubs are available, not just this week, but it's happening multiple weeks. Correct, Daniel? Yes. Yeah. And then not only that, but you might sign up for one and see one of our many church people who are working these five day clubs. So thank you, Edelisa, Patty and everyone else who's doing all this hard work, Christine, for putting together five day clubs. So get your kids signed up. Thanks, Daniel, for what you're doing. God bless you guys. Wow. I'm telling you, church, it is so exciting how God can take what the enemy meant for evil by shutting down in-person gatherings, but turn it around for good. It's who we it's who we serve. That's who our God is. I'm pretty excited to continue in the series of the book of Ephesians. So this is part three. Week three, we're going to talk today about Christ the mediator. The last couple of Sundays, we've talked about how Christ was the plan. He was the provision and the position that before God created the foundations of the world, Ephesians 1, 4 says he chose us. He called us. He sees us blameless in Christ Jesus. Christ is the provision and he is the position seated in heavenly places. Last week, we talked about how Christ is our cornerstone. He is the stone that sets the foundation, that sets the direction. He's the reference point for the building. And you and I all together, all who believe in Jesus Christ are built together in Christ to be carriers of his presence and how this season of prolonged um, change and truthfully, nothing's going to go back to the way it was before March. We're in a new normal but we want to discover what is the new Christ normal. That's what we have. That's our hope as believers in Jesus Christ. And last week we talked about how this is a time to reassess the foundation of your own life, your family, Heights Worship Center, the body of Christ, that we need to allow the Holy Spirit to do uh, an evaluation of our foundation because we are under construction through the working of the Holy Spirit. And so the goal, the last verse in Ephesians chapter one talks about being filled to the fullness of Christ. And so today we're going to get into chapter two. We're going to talk about how Jesus Christ is our mediator. And in Ephesians chapter two, we're going to work our way through it. I'll encourage you to read along in your Bible, your Bible app with us. Um, let's pray before we begin. Father, we thank you that before you created the world, you chose, you decided, you initiated the plan to send your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross so that all who believe will be saved, will be forgiven, and can have relationship with you. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would give us a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of revelation, that the eyes of our heart would be open so that we would know you more. Thank you for this time together in the word. Let it come alive in us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're going to read Ephesians chapter 2, the first couple of verses here. It says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us, it says, all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. Verse four, I love this. But God, this is one of my favorite things. If you've ever attended Bible study or retreats, when I get an opportunity to teach a lot, that's one of my favorite phrases. But God is so rich in mercy 
And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Verse six, for he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. So before Jesus Christ, before you know who Jesus Christ is, before you understand what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross, these seven verses begin to draw a very important contrast. Before Christ, you were disobedient. Before Christ, you lived in sin. Before Christ, you are spiritually dead. You obeyed the devil. It's one or the other. You either serve God or you serve the devil. Before Christ, you were subject to God's anger that says, or what that really means is you were deserving of punishment for your wrong doing. See, sometimes we think of God's wrath as God's an angry God, but it's not that kind of wrath. It's his wrath that demands justice for wrongdoing. That's why you see an outcry when there's injustice happening, because you and I are created in the image of God. God is just. And because he is just, he must have something to make up for the injustice, right? He demands payment. He demands retribution for injustice. Well, in this case, we deserve punishment for our wrongdoing. And so he provided Jesus Christ to be the payment for our injustice, for our wrongdoing. So when you see outcries against injustice, it's really an expression of the fact that you and I are made in the image of God. Whether we believe in God or not does not negate the truth that we are made in God's image. That's why whether they're atheist, agnostic, don't believe in God, believe in God, you will see people from all walks of life react to injustice. Why? Because God is just. And so when it talks about how we used to live apart from God and we served the devil and we followed our own sinful ways, that we were subject to God's anger because God's just, he demands that injustice be dealt with. But God is also so good that he provided that payment for us through Jesus Christ, which brings me to my next point of what we read in these seven verses. So we have before Christ, before you came to know Jesus Christ, this is your reality. But now because of Christ, we have a new reality. So you've got to understand before you decided to follow Jesus, you lived in one reality. The reality of following your own ways, doing what you wanted to do, when you wanted to do it, what you thought, what made you feel good. But now because of Christ, we have a new reality. And part of the journey once we become followers of Jesus is to learn how to walk out the new life, the new identity, the new purpose that we have in Christ. And these seven verses give us this contrast. Before Christ, you were spiritually dead because of the way you live, but now you have new life in Christ. You were raised from the dead with Christ. So we die to our sins and we are raised to new life with Christ. And when Christ is seated in heavenly places, the Bible tells us, we just read that we are also seated with Christ in heavenly places. Now we've been given a new position. That means that we are no longer subject to the power of sin, of the devil, of this world, because we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That means we have the ability to see like he sees. It means that we also have the authority of Christ being seated in those places. Because of Christ, you and I are now united with Christ. It reminds me of that scripture in Galatians 2, where Paul says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So now I live my life with Christ. We're united with Christ. And I love how it tells us there in verse seven that God did this so that you and I 
would be examples of how good God is, of his grace and his kindness to all. It is only by grace we are saved. I want to read a scripture for 1 Timothy to illustrate the fact that because of Christ, our mediator, we now have new life, new purpose. We have a new reality. It says here, 1 Timothy chapter 2, it says, God wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. This is so important. God wants everyone to be saved. That's his desire. He wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man, Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is God's heart. Everyone. Remember what John 3, 16 tells us, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whoever believes will be saved. Whoever believes will not perish, have spiritual death, but will have everlasting, eternal life. Jesus Christ gave his life to purchase freedom. Jesus Christ's death on the cross paid for the injustice of our sins, fulfilled the need of God, a just God for punishment for that wrongdoing. It fulfilled that need. So God is just, but he's so merciful and kind that he wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to understand the truth. And he says, there's one way, one mediator, one person, one God who can reconcile God and humanity. It's Christ. See, when we talk about mediator, I, I looked up the term mediator and what it means is a go-between. Someone who brings reconciliation, to reconcile, to bring about peace between two parties, to settle a dispute. When Jesus Christ, our mediator, that's what he did between God and humanity. See, God is a perfect God. There's no sin in him. There's no malice. There's no evil. There's no wickedness. He's perfect. He's holy. He's unique. All right. But when we sin, when sin entered the world, it caused separation because clean and unclean can't go together. Right. Because holy without sin and sin can't go together. So what did God do? He gave his son, Jesus Christ, to be the bridge, to be the go between, to reconcile God and humanity. And it comes through grace. It comes through faith. So Jesus Christ is our mediator. He is our go between. He's the one whose death on the cross bought for us our freedom. And not only that relationship with God, the father, I want to look back at Ephesians chapter two, verse one. I want to reread verses one through three. And I want to do this to kind of draw out these truths again. It says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Verse three, all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. So let's get a reality check. All right. This is so important for us. Here's our reality check. You either serve God or you serve the devil. Sin separates you from God and it requires a payment, right? There's a penalty that requires a payment. You and I, we deserve punishment for our wrongdoing, for our sinful action. We understand that sin leads to death, spiritual death, eternal separation from God, eternal death. We deserve that separation. We deserve punishment, but God. I told you how this is like one of my favorite phrases, but God. Because this is so important when it says in Ephesians chapter two, verse four, I want to keep reading and draw this truth out. But God, but God is so rich in mercy, right? He's just, but he's merciful. He is the perfect balance of justice and mercy. He says, but God, who is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. 
when he raised Christ Jesus from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. But God, as we've been talking about this entire series, it was God's grace. It was his decision. It was his plan. It was his initiation. It's only by his grace that you're saved. So verse eight reads this, God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for it. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done so that none of us can boast about it. So let's look at this. But God, he's rich in mercy. He's rich in kindness. So he came up with this plan. Justice, the fact that God is just, demands some kind of payment for sin. But his mercy said, I know what to do. I will send my son, Jesus Christ. God became flesh. He came to earth. He lived among us, Jesus did. He experienced everything we've experienced. He was tempted in every way that we were tempted, but without sin. And because of that, when Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross, he was able to fulfill all of the requirements, the just requirements for all of the world's sin. It's only by God's grace that you can be saved. You cannot earn salvation. This is so important because you cannot outweigh your good works and your bad works. Often people will say, well, I'm good with God. I mean, I'm a good person. I haven't killed anybody. Um, you know, it's not like I've gone out and done bad things. I'm, I'm a good person. So yeah, okay. I believe I'll go to heaven. That's not what gets you into heaven. It's not how much good you've done because you cannot outweigh the scales of justice between how much good you do. Well, here's a little bit of bad, but if I do enough good, maybe God will be pleased with me and maybe I can go to heaven. It, it doesn't work that way. You cannot try to make up for your mistakes by doing good works. You cannot earn salvation. It is a gift, not a reward. Salvation is a gift, one that you have to choose to receive. It means that you have to decide, I am going to place my faith in Jesus Christ. I'm going to believe that he is the son of God, that he came and he died on the cross for me and was raised again. And I will choose to follow him, to live according to the new life he's given me, the new destiny, the new plans that he has for me. Salvation comes only through faith. It's not by works so that no man can boast. It's a gift. Grace is a gift. This is what we read in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, when the apostles were standing in front of the Sanhedrin and they said this, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Do you understand that the only way you can have forgiveness for sins, the only way you can experience salvation or the, the fulfillment of the just requirements for the fact that you have messed up is by choosing to put your faith to believe in Jesus Christ, to give your life and to follow him. Christ is your mediator. And today I'm going to address two aspects of Christ being your mediator, your personal mediator between you and God. He's also a mediator between people, which we're going to read in Ephesians chapter two. Let's read what that says. We're going to pick up in verse 11. This is what it says in verse 11. So don't forget that you Gentiles, remember Gentiles were people who are not Jewish. So you had the Jewish people group and you had the Gentile group. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it only affected their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel 
and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. If you don't know Jesus Christ, then you live in this world without God and without hope. If there was ever a time where we need God more than ever, it's now. I love that, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle, Dana, and Daniel for singing that song. If I ever needed you, I need you now. The entire global economy has been affected by the pandemic. There is so much sickness and difficulties, unemployment, and issues that have arisen. If we ever needed God, it's now. We cannot afford to live apart from God. If you have believed God and you started out, but you've gotten off track, today is the day to get on track. Today is the day to say, you know what, God, I recognize that I've been trying to deal with the stress of reality without you and without hope. It seems hopeless. But today God is inviting you to embrace him and to know that you don't have to face this world alone. You don't have to face it without God. He is here. He wants to help you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to empower you to walk in all that he has for you. You don't have to live in this world without God and without hope. Hear, come on, hear that today. You don't have to live without God and without hope. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus you don't have to live without God because now you can be united, united, joined together. Remember what God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It says once you were far away, but now you have been brought near. Once you were far away from God, didn't think about him, didn't incorporate him or look to him for your life. But now you've been brought near. To him through the blood of Jesus Christ, for Christ Himself has brought peace to us. This is so powerful because what He's pointing out is that when you don't know Christ, when you don't know God, then you're an outsider, you're excluded from the covenant promises of God, you're separated from God. But this is not what He desires for you. I love how it says, We remember we said, but God. Now it's, but now, right? I was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. This scripture says you were separated from God, but now you're united with Christ. You were far away, but now you're brought near. And now you have peace between you and God. That peace is not an absence of problems. That peace means that you have relationship with God. Peace in this context Remember what I said, sin demands, the just nature of God demands that sin has payment. Well, if you owe a debt, there's no peace because there's separation. But Jesus Christ paid that debt for your wrongdoing. And in doing so, when you accept that free gift, now you have peace. Things are made right. That's what this context is. But now you have peace. Christ has brought peace to us. I want to read that again. Ephesians 2 verse 14. I'm going to keep reading. Follow with me. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 through 18. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people. When in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Let's keep reading. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Jesus Christ is not only a personal mediator between you and God, but he is a mediator between different people groups. 
This is so important for you and I as the body of Christ to understand. We have all been created differently. Every people group, every ethnicity, every culture, God has created beautifully and wonderfully and incorporated different expressions of an infinite God through different people groups. And this is not meant to divide us. Our differences are not meant to divide us, but our differences are meant to enlarge, to enhance, to enrich our lives and our experience of the presence of God. Because remember, we are being built up together in Christ. And this is important in the time of of social unrest in America with the racial tensions that we are experiencing. The answer is Jesus Christ. You've got to understand that the real solution that will end hostility between people groups is Jesus Christ. And that means that you and I have to allow the Holy Spirit to check our hearts. Is there anything in me that needs to be dealt with? Is there prejudice? Is there racism? Is there anything that I do to treat someone or look at a different group of people, a different ethnicity? Do I distance myself from them? God, show me and change my heart. Yes, we need reform in America. There are certainly some laws that could be passed or changed that will help bring about some some reconciliation between the ethnicity groups. But you know what? Laws cannot change hearts. You got to hear this because the Old Testament was the law and the law did one thing. It pointed out the need for a savior. The law said, look, you cannot do it perfectly. That's why you need a savior. Jesus Christ is the only one who changes hearts. We need to be praying for America. We need to be praying for another great awakening. We need to be praying that the body of Christ would stop fighting amongst ourselves and our differences and realize that in Christ, we are made one new people. Hear my heart, one new people. I am so grateful that God placed me in, at the time, a majority Filipino church. Well, all Filipino church. And then me, and my, my immersion in a different culture and a different expression of the faith of Jesus Christ has enlarged my life. It's enhanced my understanding of God. There are so many things from the Filipino culture that I have incorporated into my way of life. And I, I believe that every culture has something good to bring to the table and expression. And even as our churches become very diverse and multi-ethnic, we need to look at Jesus Christ who unifies us. He unifies us. We are not divided in Christ. We are made one new people in Christ. We're not to be separate. We're to be unified. Remember, unity is not uniformity. Because God is so diverse. Have you you've ever taken a walk outside and marveled at the variety, the numerous varieties of plants and flowers and insects and birds. I mean, God is so diverse that there's like 5,000 some different kinds of beetles, <laughs> beetles, but that's the rich diversity of God. So how much more so then can the human race only really be filled to the fullness of Christ? But when we learn to come together as one in all of our different expressions of the image of God, Jesus Christ is the mediator between different people groups. So stop looking at people from what they, how they dress or where they're born or where they're from or their educational level or their social level. Begin to see people for who they are made in the image of God and let us learn to be one in Christ. I love how it says that Jesus broke down the wall of hostility between God and people, but then he also breaks down the walls of hostility between people groups. We need a great awakening in America because that's the only answer to really bring about social justice. You got to understand that social justice is going to come when the body of Christ begins to walk in the truth of who Jesus Christ is, loving like Jesus, learning how to walk in that wisdom, being peace. See, just as Jesus, a mediator who reconciles, you and I are called to also be ambassadors of reconciliation. We are to spread the message of Christ, our mediator, not just between man and God on an individual level, because that's 
That's very important. Remember what we read in Timothy, God wants all men to be saved and to know the truth, but also between people groups. See, I believe that real peace between different people groups is found when Jesus is the center. So hear my heart, church. Please don't get drowned and overwhelmed by the controversy created in headlines. OK, don't allow what you see to influence you away from the reality we have in Jesus Christ. This time, more than ever, we need to lean in and really hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. This is when we need to stand on Christ, our cornerstone, because the answer is not found in one political party or another. The answer is not found in one movement or another. The answer is found in Jesus Christ. Christ. So make sure your loyalty to Jesus Christ trumps your political parties, your ideologies, your social trends. You make sure that Christ is the one, the only, your foundation. Just keep that in mind as we continue to navigate this interesting 2020. <laughs> Ephesians 2.18. I want to read this in the New Living Translation this time. It says this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 18. New Living Translation, now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ Jesus has done for us, all of us. Let's keep reading in verse 19 and 20. This is the Passion Translation. So you are not foreigners or guests, but rather you are the children of the city of the Holy Ones with all the rights as family members of the household of God. You are rising like the perfectly fitted stones of the temple and your lives are being built up together upon the ideal foundation laid by the apostles and prophets. And best of all, look what it says. And best of all, you are connected to the head cornerstone of the building, the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself. This entire building, that's you and me, right? This entire building is under construction and is continually growing under his supervision until it rises up completed as the holy temple of the Lord himself. All are members of the family of God. Why? Because he decided in advance before he created the world to adopt you and me into his family. Why did God create humanity? He wanted to create a family for himself. And how do we become part of the family of God? By placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And when we place our faith in Jesus Christ, no matter our background, our education level, our socioeconomic status, our popularity on social media, no matter what our skin color looks like or how tall or short we are, we are all built together as one upon the word of God, upon Jesus Christ, our cornerstone. And we are under constant construction. The Holy Spirit is doing a work to build up the body of Christ to be carriers of his presence. Christ is the mediator between you and God and between all people groups. Why? Because it was God's plan from before the world that all would be saved. I'm gonna close by reading Revelations. I didn't make a slide to put on the screen, but I want to read Revelations chapter seven. This is an end time picture of what happens when Christ comes back for the church, for everyone who believes in him. And this is what it says. John had a vision. He says, after this, I saw a vast crowd too great to count from every nation, tribe, people and language. Ooh, I love that. This was God's plan from the beginning. Red, yellow, brown, black, white, olive, cream. I don't know. All the different skin tones on a melanin scheme. Look, it was his intention from every language, tribe, people group, villagers to bring us together as one. It says from every nation and tribe, people and language standing in front of the throne and before the lamb. They were clothed in white robes clean, right? And they held palm branches in their hands and they were shouting with a great roar. Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the lamb. 
And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings. And they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and they worshiped God. And they sang, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen from every people group, every tribe, every nation, standing around the throne of God, acknowledging that God had a plan from the beginning. And he sent Jesus Christ, the mediator, to give you right standing before God to fulfill that, that payment for your mess ups, your wrongdoings, your sin, so that you could have relationship with God. So that as it says in Ephesians 1 verse 4, that you would be seen as holy without fault blameless. Wow. Isn't that so good to know that despite our imperfections, when we say yes to Jesus, God sees the perfection of his son. And it is a gift by grace. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. If you haven't ever given your life to Jesus Christ, today is your day to say yes. Because now you understand that because God is just and he's perfect, he does require payment for our wrongdoings. But he was so merciful, so kind towards us, so good that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to take our place, to pay the penalty, to fulfill our debt so that we could have right standing with God, so that we could have peace with God. Where before you lived apart from God, without God, without hope, but in Christ, you now can live with God, united with Christ, with hope. Hope that when no matter what happens, God has got you. Hope that he's going to work all things for good. Hope that when this life is over, we will spend eternity with him in heaven, with every person, tribe, language, and tongue joined around in the worship of our God. I want to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. We have created a web page on our website that gives you more information to help you in the new journey of faith in Christ Jesus. You can visit it right there. And we want to hear from you. If you need a Bible, we want to give you a Bible. We want to help you on this new journey of believing Christ. But I'm going to pray a prayer. And I invite you, even if, like I said before, maybe you've started out with God, but you've gotten off track. And you have found yourself overwhelmed by all of the new difficult parts of 2020. And he's inviting you to to reattach, so to speak, to come back, to draw near in Christ so that you can experience the peace of God. So you can experience the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. So pray this with me. Say, dear God, thank you for giving your son, Jesus Christ to pay the penalty for my wrongdoing. I choose today to receive the free gift of salvation. I believe in your son, Jesus, that he died on the cross and was raised to life. And now I am being raised to life to live a new life in Christ. And I choose to follow you, Jesus, every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, I want to again, urge you, pray for another great awakening in America. Because what we need is for Jesus Christ to come, for another revival to come across this nation, because real social justice comes in the person of Jesus Christ. Real change and real peace between different people groups comes in the person of Jesus Christ. And I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart and see how can I be part of that How can I be part of that solution? How can I be an agent for social justice? How can I be an agent of peace between people groups? Can we pray that together? Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would search our hearts. We desire to be people who bring peace not his hostility. We desire to be people who enhance and enrich other people's lives and not be divided over differences. We ask Holy Spirit that you would search our hearts, reveal if there's any wrong thinking or wrong attitudes, any prejudice or racism. We want to repent of those things and ask for your forgiveness. And we ask that you would fill us full of Christ 
that we would learn to love people the way you love us and that we would be ambassadors of peace, of reconciliation, to tell others the good news of Jesus Christ, that he came to be the mediator between God and man, but also between people groups, that we are one in Christ. So we give you permission, Holy Spirit, to do this work in us, that which pleases you. We ask this together in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask Pastor Jaron to come back, lead us with Sister Rose in our communion as we remember the body of Jesus, the sacrifice on the cross. Thank you, Pastor Adon. This has been a wonderful experience to go through the word of what it is to be called children of God Amen. and having the mediator to be able to make legal transaction for every tribe, nation, language, and people groups mm -hmm. to be able to come to the same table. If there is a unifying factor of what we heard today from the preaching is that when we come to the Lord's table, it is the same blood, it is the same bread that we all partake together. No matter what ethnicity you are in, mm -hmm. this is the common ground. This is the redemptive work and finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ that today do this in remembrance of him who has shed his blood for all mankind. And if you desire to start a revival in America and throughout the world, let me call you to a revival of communion a revival of what it is to be on the same table. You know, you can eat together in the same table if you had conflict with people, mm -hmm. you know, but when you come to the Lord's table, that means you're ready to dine, to fellowship, to connect with those that are in the table. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of analogy, you know, that, that come when you come to the table, there's the round table discussion. There is a table, you know, in different ways that you can come to fellowship, but today, we come to the Lord's table. Amen. You know what? You've got reservation. I give you a little bit of time to get your cup and get your bread, whatever type of juice or liquid you want to drink. You know, it's all the emblem that stands for. But when we partake right now, communion, mm -hmm. we're declaring a word to America. Mm -hmm. We're declaring a word to all the word today that there is unity in Christ. That when we partake communion today, this is the common ground common union common ground of where we all belong to the lord jesus christ i'll be asking sister rose to lead us in prayer for the bread and as we partake of this bread remember there's one body there's no many body of jesus christ there's only one body so whatever type of, of bread you partake the this the emblem that typifies that symbolizes this stands for the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sister Rose, please. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord God, again, for sending your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. who paid for all of our sins, who forgave all of our sins, and who even heal our soul, our, our spirit, and our bodies, right. Lord. And as we partake this emblem of bread, Jesus, this is your broken body that paid for all of our sicknesses, even death on the cross. We thank you, Jesus, that you paid for all the sicknesses. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick in the body right now, even in the soul and in the spirit, Lord, to be healed. Once, Lord God, they touch this bread into their bodies, Lord God, we pray, Lord, that you will bless it, Lord God and touch their bodies, Lord, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, from their innermost being to the outermost, and be healed in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it, Lord God, that it be a glorifying matter to you, Lord. Be glorified, God, in the healing of yes. all those who believe that they will receive their healing right now. And I'm praying for so many prayer requests, God, of healing. And we thank you, yes. Lord God, for touching yes. them, Lord amen. God, in amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's partake of the bread together, please. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. 
We're holding the cup together. We want to partake it in victory. Amen. Hallelujah. As Pastor Don was uh, sharing the word of how Jesus has purchased by his blood. Mm. There is no devaluation in the power of the blood of Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. It can purchase anybody. Payment can buy back from kingdom of darkness yes. into Jesus Christ marvelous light. Yes. And today, if you are that person that has just come home, that prodigal that just returned to the Lord, that's it. You are being invited to this common union today mm -hmm. and become fellowship, one with the Father and with the family. Mm -hmm. And so again, you know, seeing how we are being brought together in this family of God, mm -hmm. we celebrate. And so with this cup right now, Lord, we mm -hmm. hold in our hand that symbolizes the purchasing power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. From to every nation, to every tribe, Jesus, language, Jesus. or tongue, your yes, blood yes. can pay for the penalty of Jesus, sin and you, guilt Jesus, and of the past. So today we declare Jesus. victory. We declare freedom. We declare redemption. We declare, Lord God, a brand new start of life mm -hmm. through your shed blood the finished work of Jesus on the cross. We receive this because it's a new transaction, a new contract, a new covenant in your blood. And thank you that you did well. You did your part. Now we do our part of the contract, obeying you, following you, hearing your word, believing you, trusting you. For this we pray and give you thanks in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's partake of the cup together, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. We'll be having our worship team again to be able to come back and be able to lead us in the blessing song. But at the same time, we just want to declare a, a prayer of thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Lord, this, Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for yes. what you have done today. Everybody. Thank you, Lord, for the word that you have spoken through Pastor Adon throughout this week. And yes. even, Lord, for yes, the testimony in song and in the word. And we just give you back the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Family, as uh, we close out today's service, let's just sing this prayer of blessing over each other and our families. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn him face toward you and give you peace. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, church, again, for worshiping with us today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his grace be upon you, his favor shine on you. We love you. Thank you again for worshiping with us. Hey, don't forget, we got Zoom Bible studies all week long. So just contact us, private message us. We'll let you know what's happening there. Five day clubs, kids. Don't miss out. Have a great week. And midweek. Midweek Thursday, 7 o'clock. Yes. <laughs> all right. We'll see you guys.